The movie starts with the death of Howard Red Stevens, a business tycoon, and a billionaire. Ted Hamilton responds calmly as if he had anticipated this moment. He directs Miss Hastings, his assistant, to tell Red's family and business associates. She consoles him at his loss, implying that they were quite close. Two of Red's sons are unhappy because it's pouring at the burial, and they appear to be there out of duty rather than grief. A young girl, Emily, with a pink umbrella appears. She feels the raindrops on her face innocently. Her mother, Alexia confronts her tenderly because she does not want her to get sick. Loud music announces the arrival of a car and draws everyone's attention. Jason walks out, thinking he looks great with his sunglasses and cigarette. Emily is delighted to see him. Jason's mother tells him that he is late to which he only replies, for what? Following the funeral, everyone gathered at the office to hear Howard Red's will. Hamilton enters the room and expresses his condolences for the death of his business partner and a friend. He is interrupted by Red's oldest son, who is eagerly awaiting him to read the will. He is overjoyed at the prospect of receiving a $600 million company, but his joy is cut short when Hamilton reads the will, which states that he is removed of all say in the company's affairs. Followed by his father's statement, you have never cared for the company while I was alive, so I doubt it will be different when I'm dead. Jason enters the waiting room as the next in line. Red's daughter becomes furious at receiving only a 10,000-acre cow farm. Another of his sons did not receive what he desired and left. Jason's mother was pleased with herself because she received the mansion she lives in as well as a managed trust for lifelong costs. Unfortunately for her, Hamilton will continue to have control of the house. Jason is about to leave when Hamilton calls out to him. He hesitates since he is certain his grandfather has left him nothing, but his curiosity wins out. His inheritance appears to be a box of envelopes. Hamilton uses the key to unlock the box and extracts a CD. Jason is super ticked off by his grandfather playing even after his death, but still, he listens with interest as the recording plays. Red claims that he believes Jason is the one he has harmed the most and that he has been contemplating how to make up to Jason for a long time. As Jason stands up to leave, Red continues to emphasize that he does not want to give Jason anything that will damage him as his aunts and uncles did. Red has set a series of tests for him, and if he passes them, he will receive the ultimate gift. If he fails, he will receive nothing. Red also includes that everything must be to Hamilton's satisfaction starting with the 7 a.m. flight to Texas. Not knowing why, confused and annoyed Jason says that his grandfather couldn't possibly give me that he hasn't already taken away. He leaves Hamilton and Miss Hastings disappointed, slamming the door on his way out. His girlfriend inquires about his day at home. Jason describes having to fly to Texas without knowing why to participate in his grandfather's little quest. He says that he will not be attending, and she wonders if he is not curious. Jason responds that his grandfather damaged his life and that the best retribution he can make is to ignore him. However, the girlfriend disagrees, stating that having additional money is always a good thing, and that he should earn as much as he can. Jason rides his motorcycle to the airport, where he recklessly abandons it. Miss Hastings offers him his ticket, and he boards the plane. Being the entitled man that he is, he doesn't even look at the ticket and sits in first class. When a flight attendant notifies Jason of his actual seat, he responds, do you know who I am? It doesn't work, and Jason is forced to sit in the economy with a wailing baby directly next to him. In Texas, a stranger approaches Jason and observes that he does not appear to have worked a single day in his life. He puts his backpack away casually and introduces himself as Gus. Gus describes Red as a great man who liked hard labor as they drive. Jason is taken aback when Gus informs him that they had been driving on his land for the past half hour. Gus reminds Jason that breakfast is at 5 a.m. when they arrive at his humble home but Jason inquires about his gift. Gus simply walks away, chuckling, while Jason thinks to himself, this is how morning hell looks. When Jason does not get up for breakfast the next morning, Gus electrocutes him. They drive out to a field, where Jason is shown how to install fence posts. He lays around without working, looking for an area with a phone connection. He does not see the point to all these works. The next day, they drive out again, and he tries out the fence post. Jason seemed delighted with himself despite doing a terrible job. Gus enters, and without saying anything, hooks a rope to one of the posts before tearing them all down with his automobile in one sweep. Jason, who is balancing on a tractor, eventually finds a connection and phones his girlfriend. As she inquires about the gift, he responds vaguely that it involves labor, land, and building materials, and that he, himself has no idea what he is talking about. A revelation comes upon him when he figures out he may get the gift if he's finished with the task. With renewed enthusiasm, Jason gets up before Gus and works carefully, even setting up the land post right this time. Gus is pleased, and Jason has been working hard for a month without complaint. As he gains confidence in his talents, he even wants to continue when Gus arrives to pick him up and give over all the work to a group. Gus tells them when they arrive at the airport that if he does any job like he did this month, he can achieve anything. 
Jason inquires about the present once more, but Gus only chuckles and drives away. Back at Hamilton's office, Jason was enraged at being forced to perform a month's worth of hard labor, which Hamilton claims has done a favor to Jason. When Jason inquires about his gift, Hamilton responds that he will only receive a gift of labor. Hamilton walks away, congratulating Jason, but Jason follows him, politely inquiring about the gift, displaying his first touch of humility. Jason chooses to apologize to Hamilton and tells him that what is in store for him may be very beneficial. However, Hamilton's solution to the issue of what the next present might be is simply that you'll know. When he gets to his apartment, it is empty, and his car has been towed away. You don't really get to live until you've lost everything. While playing the following recording back at Hamilton's office, Jason sneers that there wasn't a single person at his funeral who didn't stand to gain from him. Jason is given his next assignment, which is to return with one loyal friend before the end of the month. He decides to take his girlfriend out to a nice restaurant. He selects the most expensive champagne. She believes he is going to propose, but he is actually wanting to move in with her while lying about his apartment being refurbished. Soon after when his credit card is refused, everyone can see that Jason is lying again when he talks about switching banks. He asks if she could take care of the payment this time, to which she begins to cry and says, you're asking me to pay the bill. Jason's expression is priceless when his girlfriend abruptly leaves and reality sets in. Jason understands the actual significance of those who stick with you because many of his friends refuse to accept him in. Even his mother refuses because Hamilton warned her that if she did, she would lose everything. The maid chases him away when he wakes up beside the pool. He sits down on a park bench, depressed. Unknown to Jason, a homeless man who looks to have taken ownership of that particular bench requests him to vacate from his seat. Jason tries to push him away, but the homeless man claims it's a free country, and he has the same rights as he has. To which Jason responds, name one thing in this country that's free. They agree to throw a coin, but neither of them had any money. However, a small girl with a pink umbrella appears and lends them a quarter but the homeless guy catches it in the air and runs away. Surprised, Emily strikes up a conversation with Jason saying she recognizes him from the funeral. Alexia, her mom calls out worried telling her off for talking to a stranger. Again, as she apologizes for disturbing, Jason replies that he isn't the one who is disturbed. After some more talks when Emily and her mother is about to leave, Jason straight up asks if she wants to be his friend. He explains his situation is complicated to which the girl replies, it's not complicated, it's pathetic. For some time, he goes on sleeping on the street creeping on his girlfriend and watching her cheat on him. On his last day of the challenge, Emily and Alexia are having a picnic in the park when the bum from earlier pesters them. He pulls him away by racing for his special bench. Jason tells them about the challenge as well as that he can't promise them anything. The little girl and her mom seem reluctant but subtly charmed by him agrees to help. At Hamilton's office, Emily asserts her dominance by loudly sipping on her straw convincing them saying she plans on knowing Jason for the rest of her life. Upon leaving the building, Alexia tries scheduling to meet up with Jason the next day at their usual picnic spot. But Jason sarcastically replies sure and just walks away. At Hamilton's office, Red mentions that money was like air for Jason so this time as he receives a paycheck for the hard work he did in Texas. His next task is to spend the money on someone who really needs it. At the park Jason's about to give some money to his bench buddy but he runs away. It turns out he has been rummaging the purse of Alexia which he stole. As Jason picks up the purse, he discovers hospital bills for Emily. Jason finds the hospital from the bills and sees. Emily has her own room in the hospital. Leaving the bag in the room, he bumps into Alexia only to find out Emily has leukemia. Admitting to having to give away some money for his next task, Alexia reacts defensively about him using her and her daughter to play a game. Surprising, the private investigator sent by Hamilton was sitting in the waiting chairs and Jason tells him to pay the bill for Emily. Being $100 short, he somehow manages to collect it and hands it to Hamilton next time he runs into his office succeeding in his quest. The following assignment is to gather his family and see if they can find a bit of gratitude in themselves. The doctors were accurate to guess the demise to falls during Thanksgiving days. Jason finds Emily in the hospital church. She greets him saying he is her only best friend. Jason and Emily talk sentimentally about death and God. She declares there is something very unfair about a person dying. She shows her concerns for her mother and calls out on him for not sensing something between them. Emily thinks they were made for each other even the first time they met in the park inciting him to spend Thanksgiving with her. Meanwhile, Alexia gets unfortunate news about chemotherapy not working with her daughter. She breaks down into tears as her whole world her child isn't going to be with her much longer. Jason sees her but is helpless due to the reality of it all. Alexia cries on his shoulder. Afterwards, they have a talk in the hospital cafe where Alexia shares her past and how the father left because he wanted to focus on college. Alexia thanks Jason as she assumes he was the one who paid her bill. 
and he invites her to Thanksgiving with his family. Alexia declines saying she needs to be there for Emily. Emily catches on to what's happening between Alexia and Jason and banishes her mother from spending the Thanksgiving with her. Alexia accompanies Jason to his Thanksgiving dinner. Having accomplished her mission, Emily heartwarmingly declares that they are made for each other. After Jason's first bus ride, Alexia is welcomed into a huge mansion and enjoys the fancy atmosphere with Jason's family who just can't stop bickering with one another. Alexia beams at Jason when he suggests that they each say a little thanks because after all it's Thanksgiving. They laugh at him and one of Red's oldest sons says thanks for not having to put up with his father anymore. Instead of saying thanks, the question arises as to where all the inheritance has gone. As everyone is obsessed with the inheritance, Jason leaves he realizes what he has been a part of all his life. He finally realizes how out of touch and greedy everyone has become. Alexia says that he has already walked away from it, but Jason acts ignorant about the money, and Alexia is discouraged. Alexia leaves saying that she'll pay back the money. Hamilton and Jason look at an old picture of Hamilton's wife when he shares how she passed away early. This ignites a spark in Jason to cherish Alexia more and become the man she deserves. Hamilton says Red has a talk about how everything will get tougher before it gets easier. The next challenge is something he wasn't prepared for. Jason needs to leave the country. Emily is upset that he messed things up with her mom and says he better be back for Christmas. Jason flies to South America to a public library founded by his grandfather where his father worked just before he died. A place where people share and reuse their books. The librarian shows one of his grandfather's letters and says that he proudly showed it to everyone at that time. The letter reveals that as a little boy, Jason wished for nothing more than to spend time with Red and his father. Jason always felt that his grandfather took his father away from him. After working diligently for a while, a man comes in and says that he was there the night his father died. He tells everything he knows but refuses Jason's request to take him to the crash site because he does not want to risk his life. They have a celebration in honor of Red, the founder of the library. Jason gets a glimpse of how much this library means to people and feels a little bit more connected to his father and grandfather after such a long time. This quenches some of the bitterness in him. The next morning, Jason sets out determined to find his father's crash site and it turns out that the man hidden in the back of the Jeep, expecting him to leave. He promised his grandfather he would help Jason learn the truth. Jason was told a lie about how his father died when he was trying to save a village, but the truth is that he died of boredom and looking for excitement from his impulsiveness. Red tried to protect Jason from that. Suddenly as Jason and the man were talking, a group of men appears and surround them. They claim that they are holding the Americans for ransom and will kill them after a few weeks if no one responds. As they burn the books and laugh, Jason loses all hope in these people. As time passes, Jason spends his time learning a little Spanish. One day, they are taken out of their cage when the group of men shoot their guns in the air proclaiming Merry Christmas and announcing that tomorrow they'll put the Americans to eternal sleep. After the declaration, one of the group's men sloppily closes the door on Jason. He sneaks out and frees his friend. They flee for their life and manage to escape. Alexia hugs him at the airport, she and Emily have been worried the entire time. When Jason realizes there will be no more Christmases for Emily, he is confronted with the brutal reality of what mourning over life and death truly means. He believes that money is nothing if you can't protect those you care about you. Jason is confronted with his grandfather's anguish as he rummages through old letters. He can now understand how a parent should not have to witness his child's death while crying about how his grandfather has always regretted himself for leaving Jason alone. It turns out that these assessments are ultimately a lesson in humanity and empathy. Jason visits Emily in the hospital who looks quite pale and fragile. She greets him with a welcome back stranger and roasts his gift from the airport shop. She's weak and disheartened that he wasn't back for Christmas. After giving her a peck on the cheek he says he missed her too. Jason tries to fulfill Emily's wish by taking her to Texas for a horse ride which turns out to be Alexia's dream. While horse riding, Jason gets off the horse with Alexia and says that he has to do something for Emily. He kisses Alexia while Emily and Gus witness their unusual love story blossoms. In the next recording, Red encourages Jason to dream and to act on it. That evening Jason asks what Emily's dream is, to which she replies that her dream was a perfect day with her family and she just finished it. Jason gives a speech in Hamilton's office about how he has drifted through life so far and that from now on he wants to help others achieve their dreams. At Red's request, Jason is given $100 million to do whatever he pleases which makes him a little confused. Miss Hamilton says that he didn't expect the money because now he is a different man from then. Jason works tirelessly to bring his ideas to life. He proposes his concept for a property where families can live together while receiving medical care, which would require an initial investment of $150 million. He provides the first hundreds of his own. When he is interrupted by the other partners, he turns his idea into a demand. Not a request, because this is roughly what they earn from his grandfather in a year. Jason is supported by Hamilton. Alexia, who was attending the meeting with Jason, 
receives a call and rushes out of the room in the middle of it. Jason pursues her after hearing her sobbing in Emily's room. She's gone fighting. Together, they open Emily's home with the mayor they initiated the inauguration of the living property. Private investigator leaves a tape of illegal activities Jason performed to get the rest of $100 for Emily's hospital bills, which makes him ineligible to pass the rest of the tests. Jason cannot help himself and just smiles at the madness. For the case of the property, Jason gives away all of his money. In the last of the recording, read, Jason's grandfather expresses how proud he is of the fact that Jason acted beyond the limits and expectations. As the recording comes to an end, Jason whispers with an I love you too. Hamilton gets the actual will of Red and reads out loud as Red transfers all his assets to Jason which is worth more than $2 billion. Being a transformed man, Jason is ready to conquer the world with his grandfather's lesson of empathy and compassion. That's all for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for more of these videos from Enricaps.